Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. And today I have a great card for you. It is a fanciful card. And I was first introduced to this card about two weeks ago. I saw it on one of our demonstrator boards. And I need to give a shout out to Karen at Crafty. Let me get this right. Crafty Karen Designs. Um, if you want to see her original card, I have altered this card, um, but if you want to see her original card, you'll need to pop over to my blog post um, and I link to her, I think, in my very first sentence. Um, anyway, her card was called a Tower Pinwheel card, and I love anything that's interesting and new and I'd never seen a pinwheel card before and I'm not sure if Karen is the originator of the design or not um, but she has sparked interest in this new fancy fold anyway I've seen um, pinwheel cards popping up uh, now but one of the things that I love about um, creating certain cards is I want them to be able to fit into an envelope and where's my envelope right here so Stampin' Up! has medium sized envelopes. Sorry about that. Um, they are, um, they fit a half sheet of cardstock and that is folded in half. And so that's what we call a medium envelope in Stampin' Up! world. And um, Karen's card was a tower pinwheel card which did not fit into a medium envelope. And so for her card, you had more space to decorate. So that's definitely an advantage. But I wanted a card that could fit our standard size envelopes. Um, it's better for swapping and everything. So my card is a version of the pinwheel card and I hope you appreciate that I squished into this design. Um, so here is my card. This is just the front part of the card but um, this is the pinwheel part of the card. Um, so it's really cool. So you have to decorate all the different sides of the card. Um, I'll show you a little bit better in a moment but um, I left one of the sides kind of blank so that you could write on it. You could also decorate that side, um, but each side um, is decorated. So it's kind of cool. It's a great way to use your designer series paper um, because that will help you decorate up some of those sides and, and save you a little bit of time. So if you're new to me, you have no idea who I am. Um, I do a lot of 3D designs and I love fancy folds too. Um, but on um, Saturdays, I always send out a project sheet um, that gives you the dimensions um, of the, um, the card or the project that I'm making kind of in a condensed one page format. This project sheet will be two pages. Um, because I'm also going to illustrate how I do how I did the panel so that you can more easily put together the card I hope um, so that project sheet is for my email list subscribers it's free to be on my email list but you have to be on the list to get the project sheet so if you're interested in being on my email list just check down below and um, you can get on that and if you're already a subscriber you should be getting my project sheets on Saturdays so I was really inspired by this pinwheel card and so I also uh, created a half pinwheel card and I'm not going to be doing that today. I'll be um, uh, taping uh, a standalone video and I hope to have that released tomorrow. I want to actually have two project sheets that are sent out tomorrow, the half pinwheel and the full pinwheel card, different dimensions, um, different looks. And if you are one of my customers, you uh, will will be receiving or um, if you ordered last month um, or if you, um, uh, if you, you might have already received or you will be receiving my thank you card for last month, which is a half pinwheel card. So you'll get to see one of those up close and personal. So that's a lot of talking, blah, 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 blah. Um, I do have to give a shout out to someone very special today, and that is my husband. 
Um, it is our anniversary today. We are celebrating 27 years together. It's hard to believe. We celebrate, we uh, made it through a pandemic without uh, um, killing each other or uh, in, still in good humor. Um, we we, like to, we ha like to have a little bit of banter going back and forth. And I hope he appreciates that and, and still loves me, even though I'm not perfect. Um, but anyway, um, I am very thankful to have a good man in my life. And um, so 27 years together today. Um, so yay. Anyway, moving on. I want to share with you this card. It's going to take a little while to get, get through it. It's not a hard card, though. Um, it's just the only... Uh, maybe hard part is that you have four sides to decorate so your your decoration time is going to take a little bit longer because normally we're only just doing like a front panel and now we're decorating all four panels so that's really um, the time involved with this card the fancy full card is not super hard at all once you understand how it works um, you you will be making tons of these because they are so amazing all right okay so let's pop over let me get this, these things in order here okay let me pop over to my other camera okay that's not working where's my other camera here we go there we go okay all right so i'm gonna pop up my card Let's have a quick little look. First of all, I want to show you. Here's the medium envelope, and you can see how it's totally going to fit inside one of these, right? So let me just push it down all the way into the envelope. So it does definitely fit in a medium envelope, so yay for that. Okay, and then this is what um, I have as my... Let me just put this aside for a sec. Too many things here okay so this is the card um, flattened and then you can kind of um, s switch the different sides here is another flattened outside here is another flattened outside and here is the final um, side and um, what I did here, and I'll show you how I did that in a moment. See how I have this ribbon tied around my first side? So for my last panel, I actually attached another piece of basic white that covers up that ribbon that's being wrapped around. And then I just took a little three quarter inch strip because for this panel, I wanted to have um, another piece of pattern paper over here on this side. Um, but this panel here covers up the white. So here's enough room for you to write uh, a message if you want to. If you don't want a place to write a message, then you can just go ahead with a pattern or the template for the other sides. You just add a different kind of paper for that. So then if you kind of have it open, that's what it looks like from the top or if it's kind of you know sitting out you got to kind of get peaks of the different sides as you kind of turn it right so just depending on how you hold the card you're going to have different um, views of the card but each of the flattened sides looks pretty just on its own right so um, I'll show you how I put that together and how I kind of had, see how this one kind of covers this panel. That's why this panel is inside a little bit so it doesn't peek out onto here. So each of these um, makes for its own little standalone card. All right, a lot of talking, but this card's not hard, it's just, there's some details to it that you would want to get right. So the Pansy Patch Bundle here is what I use to decorate the card. And just remember, when you buy the bundle, you save 10% over buying the Pansy Patch stamp set and Pansy dies on their own, okay? Then, let me find a spot to put everything. Then I also use the stitched rectangle dies for some of the layers, and I'm going to show you a couple tricks uh, for that as well. All right, let's get started. We're going to start by scoring and prepping the card base. 
And so we're gonna need a piece. This actually looks like really small for the type of card that we're gonna be making, right? So let me grab my stylus too. So this piece measures five and three quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. Okay, it looks really small, but trust me, this is gonna work. So we're gonna put the long side, the five and three quarter side up at the top, and we're going to score at the three quarter inch mark, the one and a half inch mark, the two and a quarter inch mark, and the three inch mark. All right, so that is all the scoring that you do on this card. You can see the lines right there, okay? And then I'll take my bone folder and I'm just going to fold along the score lines. I've just kind of moved this, so I'll show you in a second. I fold better from right to left, so I flipped my card around. So I'm folding them all in the same direction, okay? So this is what it looks like, all kind of folding. And what we're gonna do is we're going to put Tombow on this side, and we're going to glue it to this big panel here. So like here, and we're gonna make this. That's what it looks like, okay? Because we're making that um, the column in the center and that first leg of the pinwheel. All right, so let me unravel this. One other thing, I am using regular basic white cardstock for this, not the thick one. And the reason for this is this card has quite a bit of bulk here in the center, and you're gonna be adding designer series paper to it, so it's going to strengthen the card. Um, by the time you add cardstock and and all of that so the card's going to be strong enough so you don't need to use the thick um, basic white i would definitely you could if you wanted to but it's going to make your card a lot bulkier so if you just stick with a regular um, basic white it will work probably a little bit better for you it's a lot easier to handle okay so i'm going to take my tombow I'm gonna to put Tombow all along here. All right, so we're going to adhere it here, not to one of these other skinny ones. We're gonna adhere it here. The edge is gonna go right along this last um, score line right here. So just bring this around, and then I'm just lining this up. And then in order to press it down, once you have this right, once that looks right, you can press down on here and flatten it, and that will allow you to really get good adhesion right there, okay? So just press down, and it's gonna have to go flat anyway at some point, so don't feel like you can't flatten this. All right, so we've got this all adhered down. So now we're going to grab the other pieces for this card. You're going to need, again, these are just regular basic white, not the thick one. And these pieces measure two and three quarter inches. Let me make sure I get it right. Two and three quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. So we're going to adhere these to all of the sides like this. Okay, so we'll start off by number one right here. And I always put the glue on the column rather than here because I know how big this space is here. If I put it on here, I might put, too, may put, might put it too wide. So let's start off here. And I'm gonna add this right onto here. Make sure it's all the way in. And again, I can flatten this and press down all right, so let's open this up. And then we're gonna come over here. And stick this on here. Make sure it's lined up and then I can flatten it and press down on here. 
Okay. And then we just have this last side right here. And we'll put Tombow on here. And then this one's going to come out like this. I haven't made too many of these yet, so I'm still amazed that it all comes out like that. So I'm kind of like tentative and hesitant, but it's it's uh, not very hard. So now I can squish and press down and make sure I get good adhesion. So that is the basics of the card. That's not too hard at all, right? For a fancy fold, not at all hard. All right, so let's get the panels that we need to decorate the card. So let's do, I'm gonna do these in order here. All right, so I'm going to lay out one, two, and three. And we'll talk about the fourth one in a minute because we wanna make sure we're gonna wrap ribbon around that first panel, so we wanna make sure that's done before we glue that fourth panel on. So these panels each, this one's two inches by four and a quarter, and this one's two and three quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. So you're gonna need um, three of the two inch wide panels and three of the two and three quarter inch wide panels. One of the panels, I actually used a piece of cardstock. This is soft succulent. And for the rest of them, I used the, let me make sure I get the name of the paper right. Oh, I know it's on my sheet right here. It's called the Pansy Petals Paper. And uh, so this paper's awesome. It matches the bundle. I've got a ton of it spread out here. It's got just gorgeous patterns and a lot of neutrals on the back side. So it's, a great paper. So we'll start off with, um, put this aside, that's going to be two and that's going to be three. So this is our first um, set of panels that we need to adhere onto here. So let's take our Tombow or whatever adhesive. For this part you could use like a dry adhesive like um, um, our fast fuse adhesive and I'm just going to adhere that on here and then this one's going to come on here and let's just add that right here just lining it up with the edges, pressing down. So that is side one. And now we'll flip to side two and we'll grab the next two panels. And let me know if you have any questions about this card while I am live. I'm gonna read your comments afterwards because if you know me well, I don't multitask well. Too much on my brain, and I would just rather do it all at the end when I can clearly think. All right, so just lining this up. And as I said before, this is actually a piece of soft succulent cardstock, because I found like I, you could use a piece of pattern paper, but I just wanted like, I didn't want a busy pattern for this side because I was going to do a lot of stamping on this one. So I kept it like to be more of a plain panel. So you can choose what you want to do. Okay, so that's side two. And then we move to side three. And so we have our next grouping of panels. Trying to keep this all in the camera view. Okay, press down. And then last of the page three panels. 
and I will have a little diagram for the patterns that I used. If you want to follow my card exactly, I'll have it laid out for you to make it easier for you. So it's really easy if you get these panels laid out in advance and then just do it like I did. It doesn't take as much time, but if you're trying to design as you go, then it, it becomes a little harder. All right, so before we go to page four and do that little side piece, let's come back here to page one and we're gonna tie some ribbon around here. And I'm using some evening evergreen. Isn't this gorgeous ribbon? It's got that sheer, uh, factor to it. It's just really pretty and it looks really nice with this um, paper because it's one of the colors in the paper. So let me just do this. I'm going to do a little, a first little knot. I'm going to measure this out. Oh, that should be enough. I want to see how much ribbon this is so I can write it in my instruction book. So I probably, you could probably get away with about 12 inches um, because once you cut off the ends, so around 12 inch length of ribbon you will need for this one. So let me just see, get it around here. And I'll show you before I um, finish it off so that you can see how it looks on the opposite side before I put the ribbon on there. Okay, I'm just grabbing my locking tweezers because it's easier to tie a knot when you have your locking tweezers. Okay, so this way, it's going to go this way. Come on. Come around. Either that or you need your your partner or a family member or friend to put their thumb down there and you know they're not always around when you need them. Even though my husband works right next door to me, it's amazing. Like we went from, um, you know, him always going to work to um, during the pandemic, just being in the office next door. I thought that would be hard for me, but actually, um, I think that's the way it's going to be from now on. Okay, I think about a 13 inch length of ribbon would work well because I didn't cut off too much. So you'll probably need about 13 inches for this um, ribbon here like that. Okay, so now um, have a look at here. This is what the last side looks like. Okay, so it's got this ribbon running down it, so it doesn't look that great. So we need to cover that up. So just make sure your ribbon is right where it needs to be on this side. And then let's come over to this last side and finish decorating it. So I've got a piece of um, paper. This one measures three quarters of an inch by four and a quarter. And this one is going to peek through here on this side. So you're going to put it over here on the far side. I put way too much glue on there. It just kind of globbed out on me, but it's okay. And so if you have, so I'm going to try and line it up with the white right here. But see on this paper, I, I kind of, um, it kind of came out a little bit you can barely see it but if you want to you can go back afterwards and trim off your sides so they match up nicely with your whisper white because sometimes when you're putting them on there you're just off just by a little bit so you can choose if you want to trim it a bit but it's not too too bad so that will create that last little side and then this panel is going to cover up the ribbon so we're just going to put Tombow on here. And this, um, just so you know, this is a piece of whis oh, not whisper white, basic white. And it measures two inches by four and a quarter inches. So we've got that going on. All right. And then I'll just match that up right here. And now the ribbon is no more. It is hidden between, sandwiched between layers. And now you have a place to write. Now I debated, you can see maybe a little bit of the past pattern paper um, going through the basic white right here. So if you wanted to um, thicken this side up as well, you would just need another two inch um, by four and a quarter inch piece of um, basic white to fit right there but it just depends how you know 
what you want to do. And then this is where you would write your, your greeting. Okay, so now we've got the paper here. Now we need a little bit more like words or little, um, little, little things to decorate it up. So this is where you're going to come in with some of the things from the Pansy Patch Bundle. And let's set this aside right now. And so we're going to need some panels and flowers. So let's, um, we're going to be cutting some of these right here. We're going to make some of these. So let me get this out. And we're going to be um, stamping on some panels. So we're going to have, we're going to need a panel like this. But um, first of all, let's do that first layer. I'm going to grab all my stamps and bring them to the side right here. I want to show you how I did um, this layer because in the stitch rectangles dies, we don't have a square die that's that size. So we need to make one that size. So to do that, I'm going to take the third smallest of these bigger, this bigger grouping. Okay, so it matches like right here. And what we're going to do, I'm going to take my evening evergreen and my stamp, ink it up. And this is just a scrap piece of basic white. And I'm just going to plop this right down here on one side. And let me see if there's anything else I need to pre-stamp before. Oh yeah, I need to pre-stamp something else. Okay, so that's another thing. That's one thing we need to stamp. And we need to stamp some pansy heads. Sorry, I'm grabbing another piece of basic white. Let's stamp these pansy heads right here real quick. So, okay. I've got a little bit of got my stamp and chamois off the side right here and I just felt it and it's just wet enough to clean my stamps in between. So to do the pansy heads, because I'm going to stamp them and cut them out, first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fresh freesia gorgeous grape one. I'll need a little bit of scrap paper and I'm using the smaller pansy stamps for this. And I'm going to open up the fresh freesia here. And this is a little scrap piece of paper because we're going to do some stamping off. First, we're going to take the outline of the pansy, ink it up, and stamp it onto here. And then we're going to take the... Um, um, the bold part of the pansy and stamp it off once and then hover it over that outline and then stamp it down. So you'll just get kind of like a hint, a lighter version of the freesia on the inside. Then we're going to take, okay, I think I cleaned them, they're just stained, the gorgeous grape and ink this up and just hover, there's a little bit of a white spot. You can't, you can barely see it. That's the pansy center right there. And there's like that little spot in the center of this stamp and you're just gonna line the two up and then stamp it like that. And then finally, we can get rid of these two colors. We'll take some bumblebee ink and we'll put that in the center of the pansy. And there's this little tiny, um, it looks almost like a triangle. And you're just going to add that to the center. And that's how you create a fresh freesia pansy. And then let me just really quickly clean off. I've got my chamois over on the other side here. Just clean these off so you know you want to clean them off in between so that you don't muddy your ink pad colors okay so now we're gonna do a papaya pansy so to do that we'll do the 
outline full strength in papaya pale papaya one of our new in colors as is freesia and then we're going to take the bold stamp it off once hover it over the outline and then for the center we will take calypso coral and line that up with the center like that and then oops bumblebee ink is off the side right here and just add that to the center so we've got two pansies one kind of in an orange one and one is a purple one and so we will cut those out right now with our stamp and cut and emboss machine and we're going to do this one too so let me move these over here and bring my stamp and cut and emboss machine I want to show you how to do this because let me lift this up a little bit so that in case you're wondering in case you're new you can understand this whole process from beginning to end so we're going to take our stamp and cut and emboss machine put it down i've got my base platform number one doesn't matter which way it goes in i'm just trying to angle them the right direction number one we need number two, which is our thin dye adapter, and then we need um, plates for um, uh, the die cutting process. So let me put this down. I think this one's a little flatter. Let me put the flatter one on the bottom. And then we're going to do, I, want, I need to make another one of these, but I'm gonna make it in pale papaya. So we'll need this, we'll need this. So this is pale papaya cardstock and soft succulent cardstock and this is the outline the stem that I'll need for this one and then I'll need this piece and I'll need this piece I'll just pop those on there and then we're going to run those through first let's get those all set and then we'll do the other things that we need. Oop, don't shift on me. All right. Let's run those through. So I've got my, you can barely see it right here, but I'm actually cranking this through. And then we've got a stem. And then we've got the two pieces right here for this pansy. Those will be glued together to create kind of the, the pansy that hasn't fully opened yet. All right, and so then we're going to cut out our two little pansy heads. And so we have another die for that. We'll have to cut these one at a time because there's just one die for that. that first one first. Okay, one pansy head. And then I like to I like to work from left to right. It's just easier. So then we just put this around the other one. down we'll run that one through all right and there's the second pansy head all right then we've got our greeting right so this is the greeting I stamped earlier on a big piece and I want to make this into a square so first I'm going to cut this piece around here so I'm just gonna center it kind of not center it I'm gonna center it on one side but the greeting's gonna be off to the left side and then I'm gonna run that through 
Oh, and these dies are easier if you run them through like this. So one of the corners is coming through first. Did you hear that big kalump? That's because um, I ran it through with the straight edge going through. It's better if you have room to do a slight little twist like that. All right, so I can throw that piece away. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this edge right here and just line it up with where I want it to cut. It's not gonna be 100% perfect in the corners, but it's gonna be close enough for me to make it happy. No one's gonna scrutinize your card that much. So I'll just show you how that works. So now I have kind of cut down this die. Oh, it actually looks pretty good. There's a little bit of um, a stray little piece that you could cut off there. But there is um, a rectangle made into a little square. So now it will fit onto this particular card better. And then we need one more piece. Um, we need this piece right here. This um, this is the the largest rectangle over here in this grouping, and a piece of basic white. And you're actually going to cut two of these. I cut one of them earlier, so I already have a second one. So we're just going to run this through. Note the angle. Corners going through first. If you have room it's easier and look this is now running through easier because it's only having to hit that first corner first rather than a whole line so just keep that in mind if you can remember especially if you're doing a lot of them you'll probably realize that it's easier to do that I don't know who mentioned that tip but I love it it's I use it a lot okay so I've already got a second one so you're gonna need two of those all right, I think we've done all the die cutting. I hope we've done it because I want to put this machine away so it's not in our way. And I'm going to bring my camera down, I'm gonna bring it down a little lower again. Okay, so this piece right here, we're going to put right here. And we want to make sure when we glue it that it's tucked in behind here so that you don't see like half of it sticking out from the side. I mean, it's not terrible, but we want to glue it kind of right into that corner right there so we don't see it on that last page. So just keep that in mind when you're gluing your panels. Just kind of do a little peek to see where they need to be so that they don't show through so that's the first side of the card and now that's complete see all right so now we'll go to the second side and we need to stamp some leaves on this panel and a birthday greeting so let's grab the happy birthday stamp and my leaf stamps and we're going to do that grab my green ink pads following along here on my card and we're going to need that scrap piece of paper that I had earlier as well because we're going to do some stamping off. That's not my green ink pad. Here's my second green ink pad. So start off with soft succulent. Actually, no, I lied. I want to start off with evening evergreen because I want to anchor that greeting right in the middle happy birthday stamp it right in the middle okay and then get that out of the way and then we're going to take soft succulent and we'll take the um um whoop, it's off the the page we're going to take the um the bold of the leaf and stamp it off once and i'm just going to stamp it on it's kind of coming off the edge here so I'm coming off here stamp it off once 
and then it's going to come up top here like that because we're going to take our pan Z in a moment and anchor it right in the center of that. So take the leaf, stamp it off, leaf, stamp it off, and like that. And now we're going to use this detail of the leaf in full strength. So I'm just going to bring these around, kind of line it up. And one more. So, so I didn't have, I, you could also die cut these leaves, but I wanted them on here. This is just the faster way to do it. Um, to the flower heads, you stamp and die cut. And then the leaves, you stamp right on the panel. It will save yourself a little time. And also, um, if we had the leaves hanging off, you might see them a little bit from the front. So it makes sense to actually stamp them right onto the panel. Okay, move this out of the way. Move these out of the way. And then we'll take our glue and our pansy hats and put a little Tombow on there and just add that to here, Tombow here, and then add that to there. And then we can add this right here. Okay. And I'm just leaving enough room so that this um, side, when I close this up, it's going to cover it and not stick out funny. All right, so that is page number two done. So now page number three, I thought we'd do some die cuts. So I did one already. It looks like this. And so we die cut the pieces for this other one right here. So let's put that together. So I'm going to take this piece right here and just put a little Tombow right on the end of that. And just add this other piece over top, okay? And then I'll take a little bit of Tombow and again right on the end and then I'm just going to adhere these two together. Okay. So this is how I did it. So this one's gonna be down here like this. You kind of want it, you wanna have enough room so that you can stamp a love you on there. So you can bend these stems fairly easily. So if you want to stretch it out just a little bit, you can. So I'll put a little Tombow on the flower head and a little bit on the stem so that I can manipulate it how I want it to go and pin it down. So this is about here, like that. And then this one, I'm kind of just adding to the stem here, and I guess you could also cut it off here and make it a little shorter if you wanted it to. So a little on the stem, come here, put a little Tombow on there, and then you're just gonna kind of figure out where you want this one. And you can kind of bend the stem on top of that other one if you want. Bend it, make it follow the other one, okay? So there we've kind of created like a, a cute little one stem out of thing, something that was two stems. And then I took, the, this stamp actually said, where was my pansy patch um, stamp set? It said, love you much. Well. Love You Much didn't quite fit all the way on there, so guess what? I cut my stamp off to say just love you, 
I just cut very carefully in between the two, the, the much and the you, and um, you can still fit them back together and stamp them as a whole, or now I have another one that says love you. So, you know, I don't mind doing that. You might mind doing that, but I like the versatility of being able to cut stuff apart. So I've got a really big block here. I probably could have used a smaller one. But um, I'm going back to Evening Evergreen. And I'm just going to stamp that down right there. And it says, love you. Isn't that cute? It just fits on there really perfectly, doesn't it? Okay. Then come through here. And this last panel. And center it top to bottom. It's about a quarter of an inch from this center line. Like that. So I think this makes a pretty spectacular birthday card. Um, you know, wishing you a little extra happiness just because you're you. Happy birthday love you and then on the last page you can write your own special greeting so isn't that cool i just love this card just so much fun you know the whole pinwheel design um, people are going to think it's really super cool and then you can put it back into a medium envelope and mail it on its way and it's not too too bulky at all so I hope you like that I really loved it when I saw it and I was like that is such a cool card and it's not hard to make it's just got a lot of pieces to it because um, with fancy full cards we often have a lot of surfaces to cover and that is the case for this one but you know I didn't kill myself with the stamping on this one I did a little bit of stamping a little bit of die cutting and um, it doesn't take that long it's, if you're going to make more of them of course you just get yourself organized and cut all the panels and stuff ahead of time but it's not a hard card at all so let me tell you a few things before I go and see if there's any questions or comments that I need to address. Um, you know about the project sheet that's coming out. You just need to be an email subscriber. If you need that link, it's down below. If you loved the supplies or loved the project today and you need supplies um, to make the card, um, you can order them right from my blog. I have a host code this month. If you spend at least $50, with me this month, you'll get a half pack of the ombre specialty paper. It's that beautiful sparkly paper and I've cut them into quarter sheets, but you'll get a half pack of that. And um, if you spend at least $15 with me this month, you will get to choose one of my tutorials and I'm known for my little Hershey's tutorials. So I've got my little um, Hershey's cap ball cap this month um, as my new tutorial but you can choose any one of my tutorials free with an order and that's on top of like if you get the um, reward for the $50 you also get a tutorial so um, that's just um, something to think about this host code is good for July 2021 and if you're on a different month watching this a different month um, just go to my blog on my um, host code page and um, there is there will be a new host code for you and um, there's always a different special each month so you can always check those out on my host code page all right what else do I need to tell you I think I've got almost everything covered. Oh, um, just one more thing. If you love my tutorials, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And um, you can also click on that little bell and that will allow you to choose how you wanna be notified. Do you wanna know when I'm, every time I'm on or just sometimes? So you can choose your level of notification on there. All right, let me have a look at your comments. And let me see if there's any questions um, along the way. Good morning, Ellie. Good morning, Dee. Um, it's such a cool card, isn't it? Good morning, Birgit. Uh, good morning, Marge. 
Oh, thank you for the anniversary wishes. It's it's kind of cool. I know some of you have been married longer than me, but um, I, I'm i very happily married. And not that everything's perfect. I, you know, we we uh, have our, our same, you know, we probably fight about the same, not fight, but, you know, argue about the same things that, um, uh, we argued about right at the beginning of our marriage. Nothing's changed, you know. Um, I'm still super punctual and um, he's still a little bit, you know, he's very busy. So he's always running just usually a little bit late. We still have that same argument like 27 years later. It's kind of funny, but now we joke about it more than anything than, than actually argue about it. We've kind of learned to work with each other's um craziness basically maybe that's what the secret to a, a long marriage is is uh, being able to work with each other's uh um quirks right so anyway that's kind of fun uh d says decorating four sides of the card is four times the fun yes it, it can be uh except when you're in a rush but it it is it, i mean it does make for a very special card good morning debbie um he says, I love the magic of fancy folds like this one. Once you see how they go together, it's just like magic. Yes, this one's really fun. Um, that, yeah, um, Dee also mentioned that new in color um, ribbon is just fabulous. It comes in five different colors, and so it's really fun um, to do that. The little trick with the stitch rectangle die, you can really do a lot with that. Think about that. With all these dies, technically you can make them all into squares, right? Even this really jumbo one, you could turn that into a square or you can use it to match other greetings that you have. So just think about that when you're, you know, trying to, you know, sometimes I was like, oh, shoot, I don't have the correct size die. But hmm, yeah, you can cut them down just by using that little trick, no matter what size. Good morning, Linda and Cindy. I'm not seeing too many questions, but thank you so much for, for joining me this morning. Good morning, Jermaine and Lynn. D. So I hope you enjoy this card and uh, I hope um, if you enjoy it, if you want to share um, your card designs over on my uh, Facebook group, my Be Stamping with QB Facebook group, I would love to see what you come up with. Um, there are other pinwheel cards out there and different size cards, but this one's great if you want to be able to fit it into your existing envelopes. If you want to make your own envelopes, then it really doesn't matter uh, what size pinwheel card you can you do. But this one, you know, it's pretty cool. I think the the panels are are just big enough just to give you kind of like that that fun feeling of um, of a card, and it will be a great surprise. You know to have this come in the mail right um good things come in small packages right um d says i wonder if you could use the oval the same tip on the oval dies as the rectangle dies would that work so the oval dies it would be not quite the same thing just because um um because like of the curvature so um you couldn't it wouldn't quite work that it would create that nice smooth thing it would work it works well with um dies that have like a straight edge or kind of a more like uniform side shape um so you could like if you have a long skinny label you could shorten it but um, I think not so much with the long one. It works really well with the rectangle dies, but what I say always is experiment. You know, like we've got computer paper, um, a lot of us, we've got a stack of it probably in our room for other purposes. So use your scrap paper and, and play around because that's half the time, that's how I come up with my ideas is I'm just willing 
to, to play and see if it will work. It, it might work, it might not. I'm thinking the ovals won't, wouldn't work quite as well. So, um, but give it a try and see what it looks like. It might look good. Anyway, um, look for my half pinwheel card, um, especially if you wanna know how to make it. I had a customer email me last night and she said, I've never seen that before. And um, so I wanted, of course, to tell her that that we have a, um, I have a tutorial coming out on that. So if you're one of my customers and you ordered last month and you're getting this half pinwheel card and you're not sure how to make it, um, watch for that video that I will uh, release tomorrow as well as the project sheet. There will be a project sheet for both the pinwheel card and the half pinwheel card. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. My husband and I, we are going to get some takeout tonight because we're both working today. And then on the weekend, we're going to go for a hike. I'm excited after doing our hikes in Maui, I've got my um, hiking mojo back and, and I we wanna go for a hike this weekend. So um, I hope the weather holds and we're able to, to go do that. So I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend and I will see you back here next week. Take care, bye-bye.